Was your family always extremely supportive? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was really a thing where, you know, they wanted to keep me busy, keep me, you know, from getting in trouble and stuff like that. So, you know, even when I was doing that, doing the acting and all these other classes, I was running track. I was, uh, I played a little bit of basketball in high school, but I wasn't really nice, so. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm garbage, man. But, uh, you know, try to do the football thing, but I couldn't really... I didn't really have time to do that. I was always working, too, when I was young. So it was like, you know, try to juggle as much as I could. Where's your family from? Oh. Oh, my um, my family is actually from the islands. My mother's from Jamaica. Look, look. Jamaica. You know, and uh, my father's from St. Thomas. And so you were raised in the Bronx? Raised in the Bronx. Okay. Born and raised. Co-op City. <laughs> So, what was it like growing up in the Bronx? I was saying. It was fun, man. I mean, I had to go. To, I didn't go to school in co-op at Truman. I didn't go to Truman. I went to um, I'll Save Your Lutheran, which is a little ways away. Uh, but you know, I loved hanging around, hanging around the neighborhood. You know, it wasn't really much going on. It was a greenway back in the day where you know we could always run out there and play, play football, touch football, and all that. But. Um, so having such success at an early age and then coming back around the block, how was it? Did you get treated differently? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just because, I mean, as far as, you know, the neighborhood knowing what I did, mm -hmm. it really didn't, um, they didn't really know what I was going because they wasn't coming to these plays that I was doing from 10 to, like, 12. You know, it was like from ages 10 to 12, nobody really saw a lot of plays around my way. But when Fresh came out, that's when everybody knew what I did. And it's like a lot of people I didn't really know like that were acting like they were my friends. You know, we were friends forever and stuff. I'm like, I don't know you, dogs. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of that still happens. You know, you just, you know, have people that you probably didn't like back in the day and they probably didn't like you. But now that you're doing what you're doing, it's like, oh, remember me? Oh, yeah. we're good friends, man. What you doing? Let's hang out. It's like, nah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's all a part of the biz, man. A casting director once told me that you have to have two kinds of families. You have to have your family that, you know, knows you personally, knows every, the Sean Nelson behind closed doors and who will kick your ass at any given moment. And then, okay. you know, your film family. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. It does make sense. Because, I mean, you got your family. And it was like when I was younger, I wasn't treated as a star in the house. I had... Um, a bunch of brothers and sisters, about three brothers, three sisters, and you know, it was like we all had our chores to do, man. We all had our things we had to do. So when I came home, I had to either clean the kitchen, clean the bathroom, whatever the day was, you know? <laughs> How important do you think it is to keep your entertainment family, your entertainment life separate from your, your natural? Well, I mean, it, it, it just happens for me kind of you know I just I know when I'm done hanging out with the, the entertainment family or usually when I'm done with a project it's kind of hard to keep in contact with people you know because a lot of people live on it live in LA and I'm in New York so it's like you call and then you call for a couple weeks everything's cool then you call one week and they change their numbers or whatever the case may be it's not always that but you know there's people always you know sometimes lose touch man and um, that happens a lot in this industry so you know you know, the family is always there. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm going home, I know I'm going to see my family and hang out with the family and spend more time with them as opposed to when I'm working, you know, and I'm every day in and out with these cats, my um, entertainment family. And, it, you know, it's like you know when that's going to be cut off sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though you try to keep those connections right. as much as possible, but it's not going to be as strong when you're not working. So I just wrapped a film called Vansville 12, which does right. for and uh, Tony Todd, mm -hmm. a bunch of other guys. Tell us about the film, man. Who do you play? Well, it's a film about 12 inmates and uh, their struggle with the warden. Uh, the warden's a corrupt warden, and these guys, they all bring money into the this prison, this wing of the prison, and they're all like money makers in the prison. So the warden puts them all in one wing so he can keep an eye on them and take a cut. But something goes down where, you know, uh, one of the wardens kind of pets, uh, uh, murders somebody, and it's like he has to now find somebody else to pin it on. And that's kind of the gist of the story. So, you know, we're hoping that comes out sometime next year. And who do you so, play? I play, uh, <laughs> my character's name is Little Rich. Little Rich is, a. Uh, uh, I guess he's the go-to guy if you need anything as far as, you know, drugs, 
and that's about it in the prison. <laughs> <laughs> Again, dealing with drugs. Uh, you know, <laughs> drugs, more drugs, things like that. And how did you get involved with the project? I actually, uh, a friend of mine is one of the producers on the project, and um, he called me up saying that, you know, he's got this project that is, uh, the, the writer and director is, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Craig Ross. He did, um, Blue Hill Avenue. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, Craig Ross called me up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the project. He said he was writing this, this role in for me. And, uh, you know, I read the script and was like, okay, I'm down. You know, let's get it done. We shot it in uh, about two weeks. <laughs> so it was a little quick process, but we got some good stuff out of those two weeks. And you had another film that was in the ABFF, the American Black Home Festival. Oh, another one where they called my agent up, said they wanted me for this um, this role. I did a day's work on this project called the, called Premium, uh -huh. and uh, I just play a director, which is kind of funny. But it's like you know, it's kind of a chance for me to play the guy that's you know behind the desk when you're going in there auditioning, and who's looking at you with this blank look, like just do something. <laughs> Like All right, thank you. You know what I mean? And um, kind of did that. You know, it was a fun little process. And what other projects do you have in the works? Um, not really anything right now. You know, just waiting for these things to come out, trying to look for the next big big role, trying to do more films, man. I did a couple commercials last, well, this year. And, um, you know, those are paying bills. But, uh, <laughs> what commercials are they? Uh, I did a truth commercial. Uh, you know the truth commercial. Mm -hmm. Don't smoke. <laughs> And uh, I did a Mariah Carey commercial for Intel, and um, she was sitting on my lap in that one. Really? Haters. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Feeling myself real big, was it real really big. Hurt? Yeah, it was really hurt. <laughs> I was real strong. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it was good stuff. And um, what? So what's next, maybe? Like once you after you find that big role, do you think that you want to go further to directing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was a plan from, uh, from well, not from the beginning, but it's been the plan for a long time. I went to school for filmmaking, so, you know, that was always one of my things I wanted to get into. The passion is going to always be the acting. I always want to be in front of the camera, but, you know, when you're not working, you, <laughs> you got to have something else to do. So, I figure I'll get behind the camera, you know, produce, either direct. I don't know. I'm going to try to write. I'm not that good at it, but I'm going to try to write. Can you type with, like, one finger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely try to do a lot of different things behind the scenes, too. What would be that dream role for you? Hmm, dream role. I want to be a superhero. Really? I'm dead serious. I mean, you know. Like Spawn. Well, they already did those, you know what I mean? That's I'm trying to figure out what black superhero I could be, right? And I was thinking... You know, there is that cartoon Static. I don't even know if it comes on anymore, but I, I think I could play this dude Static if they ever make a real one. That's man. a pitch. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> somebody needs to make that script and stop playing with it and get me down with it so I can get my action film on. I want to be that dude that's one guy and I'm beating up like a hundred people at once. You know what I mean? It's just something that I wanted to do since, since I was a kid. You know, every kid, you know, when they're watching those Kung Fu flicks, you know, they're doing that stuff too. They want to be a Bruce Lee, they want to be Bruce Lee Roy, whatever, whatever. So, you know, I want to do that too. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? I'd be uh, psychic <laughs> and like have telekinesis, telekinesis, telekinetic powers. Yeah, something like that. Why? So, why? <laughs> There's just so much you can do with that, man. So much you can do with being psychic and read girls' minds. See, I can see what you're thinking right now. She's like, he's so not funny. But she's smiling. No. <laughs> I can tell. But, you know, that, that would be a cool power to have. All right. Cool. So great. It's, um... <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so thanks again. Once again, we're here with Sean Nelson. Yes, sir. Of the week, we're here in Bryant Park in New York City. You're watching the premiere episode of Gold in the Yard, and I am your host, China Lane. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're always bringing you the hottest, the freshest oh, yeah. <laughs> in the biz. So, are you happy about that?